guys, so today, as promised, I'm bringing you along while I clean out Iodine's cage, which is this big wooden thing behind me. Now, I did originally debate whether or not to do this as a time-lapse or a vlog. I know some of you guys like time-lapses, so I may do one in the future on this cage if that's something you want to see. Uh, but this time I thought I'd do a vlog because there's a few things I'm doing differently and I kind of feel like they need a bit of extra explanation. So the oh-so-adorable Iodine is currently in her travel cage. Oh, she's so sweet. Look at that little nose. Oh, she's just the cutest. She's not too happy about being in here, but hopefully she won't have to be in here for very long. Oh, the climbing has begun. The cage itself is looking particularly messy at the moment because I haven't spot cleaned it for a couple of days. I figured, well, I'm doing a full clean out anyway, so she can wait, she can manage. Uh, but the main change I'm going to be making to the cage is the bedding that I'm using. Now, this time of year, as I've said before, I would normally use bedding that's better suited for the hot weather. Uh, and we have Aspen, which is, is pretty decent. However, if you guys are following me on Twitter, you will know that Iodine has recently developed an allergy to something. We don't know exactly what and that is sort of the big issue. So we're working through the list of possible triggers for her allergies starting with the most probable and the most probable is the aspen bedding. Now I don't want to confuse anyone here, aspen is safe for hamsters so if you're using aspen don't you worry, don't think that your hamster is going to develop allergies or anything like that. Just like in humans, hamsters can develop allergies to the weirdest and most random of things including things that are safe for them and and unfortunately, the symptoms of allergies can vary massively, so it can be hard to tell if your hamster is actually allergic to something. Luckily, allergies in hamsters are not super common, so it's not a major thing for you to worry about. But because the aspen is on the top of the probability list for iodine's particular issues, that is what we are getting rid of, and we're going to be replacing it with a homemade paper bedding, not the one you guys are used to. Why am I so out of focus? Not the one that I've shown you guys how to make a DIY on. On, it's actually just going to be shredded paper and I'm going to line the bottom of the cage with these wood pellets over here, they're wooden cat pellets used for litter trays and stuff like that. That's going to be the odour control because of course paper bedding has no odour control. Uh, not the homemade stuff anyway, the shop bought stuff might. But we can't get hold of the shop bought stuff, we can't get Carefresh or Fitch or uh, what's the other one? Clean and Cozy I think it is. Yeah, we can't get that stuff, so I'm just going to use cat pellets on the bottom for odour control. I'm going to use shredded, coloured kitchen tissue for the top. It's not great for this time of year because of the heat, um, but there's not much you can do when you're kind of backed into a corner like this. Some people might be wondering why I wouldn't use the same kinds of substrates being used in Poe's cage, and that's just because Again, we're not, we're really not sure what is triggering her allergies. The safest option to switch to is paper bedding, so that's why we're swapping to that and not something else. So I'm going to start with the usual routine, taking out all of the toys and supplies and scooping out and bagging up the old substrate. So at this point I should mention I'm going to be doing a couple of things that I would not normally do when I'm cleaning at this cage. For starters, taking out the wheel, normally I just leave that in. I'm going to be taking off the ramps and I'm also going to be taking off this front frame from the shelf. The reason I'm doing that is just so I can give it as deep of a clean as possible given the situation with iodine and her allergies. But normally all this stuff would stay on and I would just clean around it. Okay, I may, may have gotten a teeny tiny weeny little bit carried away with the deep clean. Uh, that is the base of the cage. That is the rest of it. Those are all the shelves. Yeah. I kind of figured, well, while I'm at it, I might as well just, just do everything. If I want to do a deep clean, why not do a deep, deep clean? So I've taken all the shelves out and given them a proper scrub down. I've removed all the sticky plastic that was being used to protect the base because I did damage it a little while. Well, I didn't damage it. 
John damaged it. Either way, I decided to pull it up and just varnish the bottom like the rest of the cage. Unfortunately, the only varnish I have at the minute is dark blue, so um, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be underneath the substrate, so you won't see it. And maybe it'll look nice anyway, a nice contrast with the white. So I'm just waiting for that to dry and then I'm going to put it back on the cage, put all the shelves back in, everything will be nice and fresh and clean and I know now for a fact if, the, if it's the bedding that's causing Heidi's problems, that is going to be solved. There is not a trace of Aspen or any Aspen related product left in this cage. The cage is finally back to being in one piece and you know what, I know it took a little while longer but I am so glad that I took it apart to clean it because it looks fabulous again now, it looks all spick and span and brand new and I kind of like the look of the dark floor now. Oh and since we are on the topic of varnishing, I get this question a lot, I feel like I've answered it before but just in case I haven't, the type of varnish you want to use in a pet's cage has to be a non-toxic type, those made for uh, using on children's toys or for using in the kitchen on things like breadboards and you know wooden spoons and stuff like that that's the kind of varnish that is safe to use so in case you're looking for something that's what you want to look out for As mentioned earlier, the main substrate I'm using in the cage is just shredded tissue and this stuff is ridiculously cheap. If you are looking for a really, really cheap bedding that is easier to make than uh, the, the other DIY bedding that I showed you, as long as you have a shredder, you can make this. Just go to your local supermarket or homeware store or wherever you can find that sells regular kitchen tissue. It doesn't have to be coloured, but the coloured stuff is nice. You get the kitchen tissue, you know that the ink used in it is safe because it's safe, it has to be safe to be used around food. And you just run it through your shredder and you get this lovely confetti-like bedding, which is fantastic. All that's left to do now is add the wheel back in and accessorize the cage and then Iodine will be free to go back in there and make herself a new nest and to make herself comfortable again. ton of toys in here and that's mostly because right now I don't have a very wide selection of Syrian sized toys. I do have to make a few more um, but for this evening at least this should be enough to keep her busy. So now I'm gonna pop her back inside and uh, see what she thinks. What do you think? Huh? <laughs>